Well, this would have been Air Venture 2020 week at Oshkosh, but not this year. And it also would have been a place for Garmin to test the waters with a fairly new product. It's the Era 760 portable GPS. Let's take the unit to the bench and then we'll bring it to the airplane and see how it looks. The Era 760 has a 7 inch diagonal display and the chassis measures 7 inches wide by 4.85 inches high. It weighs 20 ounces. Now check that against the smallest current Apple iPad mini. That's 8 inches wide by 5.3 inches high and it weighs 10.5 ounces. The display size on an iPad mini is 7.9 inches. Now the unit has a capacitive touch screen and that can be viewed in both portrait and landscape mode. Now we mainly use the Era 760 and the yoke mount on a couple of different types of yokes and found it to be just the right size. Now the cradle connects to the yoke mount, but it could also be used with other mounts, including a ram ball if you wanted to say mount it up on a glare shield or some other place in the cabin. Now the cradle also has a 9-pin connector for RS-232 and power and ground inputs, and the unit simply clips into place, and it's a good fit. Just be careful of these male pins. The Era has a WVGA color TFT screen. Resolution is 580 by 800 pixels. Check that against the iPad Mini's resolution at 2048 by 1536 pixels. And the Era has a rechargeable lithium-ion battery with a USB-C power input. And like most portables, we suggest connecting the device to external power. If you don't, expect the battery to last around four hours at an 80% backlight setting, which isn't bad. Now because the Era has built-in Wi-Fi, it can work fairly well as a pre-flighting tool. Now with a Wi-Fi connection, you could do database updates, look at weather and fuel prices. You could also calculate weight and balance reports and load and view a PDF document with an SD memory card. There's also the AOPA airport directory as standard. In the cockpit, the WASP GLONASS receiver is the best we've used in any portable. This GPS engine supports the Aeros 3D Vision, which is a three-dimensional view of terrain and topographical features as seen from the outside of the aircraft. You can also select internal AHARs if you mount the unit on the panel. There's also a comprehensive traffic interface, and there's a long list of compatible Garmin devices to select from. This includes the GDL39 series portable, the GDL50 series portable, the GNX375 ADS-B transponder equipped navigator, and the GTX345 series ADS-B transponders, all of which have wireless Bluetooth. Now wired interfaces are connected with the optional Garmin Power Data interface cable. The Era comes preloaded and Wi-Fi updatable with VFR sectionals, IFR low, high, and helicopter en route charts, plus georeference approach plates. Now Garmin flight charts are standard, Jepson charts are optional, and on the main page you can select either VFR or IFR charts for overlay, or you can simply view a chart without overlaying it. Now if you've used Garmin Pilot app for iPad or Android, the feature set in the 760 will be familiar. It sports a lot of the same icons and menu structure you find in the app. As far as Navigator is concerned, it's good for tactical on-the-fly planning. It's got built-in Victor Airways and user-defined holding patterns. It even has holds over fixes, which can be inserted into the flight plan. Well, if it seems like you could do most, if not all, of that with a tablet computer run in Garmin Pilot, you're right. And that leads to the question, where does the Era 760 fit in the current market? I asked Garmin. So we're here with Jessica Koss and an Oshkosh tradition. I would be schlepping over to the Garmin metropolis with my video equipment to catch up with Jessica to talk about new products and accessories, but not this year. We're zoomed up with Jessica Koss, which is second best. And uh, we're going to talk about the 760 and where does Garmin see the 760 in a market dominated by tablet computers? Sure. Well, the, the Era 760 is really designed to be that rugged, durable product that you can toss in your flight bag, you can keep it in the aircraft, and in the event that you, unlike a mobile device really, and I did this yesterday, you know, you have your phone or your tablet in your lap, 
and you forget about it and you hop out of the airplane and it falls under the ground and there's that moment of dread. Unlike that, with the Aero 760, it's built to withstand that, you know, tossing it around and, and you don't have to worry about cracking the screen or anything like that. And with the monthly budget at risk, we couldn't help but drop the 760 off the wing of a Mooney. It fell right on its display and it survived, lucky for us. So it's really got a nice hardened design that it's just a nice companion to put either in your flight bag, in the aircraft, and just keep it there as either a nice reference to a moving map or even for a good backup. Input outputs for wiring it to uh, other displays? Yeah, that's another key differentiator between the Aero 760 and then our old other mobile devices that we carry with us in the cockpit. For example, we can connect it to the GTN XI series or the GTN 650, 750, and even the more legacy GNS WASP products and um, hardwire it for flight plan transfer so all of our devices remain sync in flight. We can even connect it via Bluetooth to a GTX 345 or even the GDL 50 series to display traffic and weather. So there's a lot of different options um, out there for the Aero 760. And what's the price point of the 760 uh, standard? Sure, it's 1,599 US dollars. Available now? Available now. Well, thanks for catching up with us, Jessica, and uh, we hope to see you at uh, Air Venture 2021. Yeah, thanks for having me. So we're masked up and mic'd up with Phil Smith at Learn to Fly Connecticut, based over at uh, Hartford Brainerd Airport and uh, Wyndham Airports in Connecticut. In the flight school's Cherokee, turns out the 760 is a useful piece of equipment in this airplane. Uh, the airplane's got a Garmin GNS 430W, Garmin G5, and uh, Phil, what are your first impressions of this, uh, this unit? We just shot a uh, RNAV approach to uh, Bradley International, and uh, you got to look at the mapping, and uh, how do you think it might supplement the 430 in this airplane? I think it's a great supplement. It's a larger screen, a little more detail than the 430. Um, I really like the, uh, the magenta line that they have on there. It's not just a solid magenta line, it's also kind of highlighted with the white in the, in the central center of the line. You can notice it a little easier on the sectional chart or the low IFR. Um, it's an intuitive instrument. Now, if we had a couple of nits to pick, we think some users will expect a higher screen resolution, especially those users that are used to modern tablets. And unlike a tablet, the 760 only connects to one Bluetooth device at a time. But there's a workaround if you can spend some money on some wiring. What you could do is you could hardwire it for power input. You can also wire the data into the GNS 430. So if you put a flight plan or load an approach into the 430, it'll automatically feed into the 760. That's uh, very which nice. is a fair amount of utility uh, in an airplane like this. Right. Especially when you get changes uh, in route, you don't have to worry about double dialing in the information. Yeah. A nice uh, secondary unit that you can use that uh, will allow for some easy functionality when you're actually up there flying. Um, so you don't, it's a little larger of a screen, so it might be a little easier, whether it's panel mounted or if it's on the yoke, to enter the information in there and then just have it uh, wirelessly uh, download the data or transfer the data to the Garmin 430 or 530 or whatever somebody's using. Um, I think it would be a, a good add-on for somebody that's uh, looking for a little more redundancy, especially if they're flying IFR a lot. Now you fly with an iPad. And uh, so the $1,600 question is, uh, do you see it as a replacement for the iPad or a supplement uh, or, or what? What are your thoughts there? It's a little smaller compared to the, even the iPad mini. So it's not gonna take up as much room in the cockpit or on the yoke uh, compared to mounting a, an iPad mini to the actual yoke. It's a little smaller, so it's a little less um, equipment in front of your face or hindering possibly your uh, ability to manipulate the flight controls. And the other thing to consider with this compared to the iPad is it doesn't get as hot. So the chance of it overheating is pretty minimal. Right. And it's also a little bit more uh, hardy when it comes to vibration. Yeah. So uh, thanks again for another review. You're welcome. Um, and uh, you could look for a full report on the Era 760 in an upcoming issue of Aviation Consumer. For Aviation Consumer, I'm Larry Aguasano. Thanks for watching.